right, guys, we do have the New York Football Giants to go through. They're a roster. I mean, I'm already, I, I, it's going to be a video. That's all I can really say, though. The rest of it, I mean, that's up to your imagination. Let's go. New York Giants 2024 roster grades, guys. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the NFL. Of course, please look and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy the New York Football Giants 2024 roster grades. Obviously, this is a team that's coming off a 6-11 season in which their starting quarterback Daniel Jones tore his ACL uh, in week 9 against the, um, the, the Raiders. Either way though, um, this is the third roster grading video again of the series. We've done two NFC teams so far. The Chicago Bears and the San Francisco 49ers. So again, if you want to watch those two, They'll, um, they're, they're in the playlist. You'll see those at the end of the video. But obviously, again, if you haven't watched any of these yet and you're just here for the Giants, well, you'll figure it out as we go along. Either way, though, let's start out with, again, the quarterback position, as we always do. And um, I, I guess we could just start with Daniel Jones, to be completely honest. Uh, Daniel Jones is a bad quarterback. That's just my completely honest opinion on him. I mean, last year, again, look at the one year. He did win a playoff game, which is something a lot of other quarterbacks can't say they've done. So at least that's good. But again, 15 touchdowns, 5 or 7, took very good care of the ball. Uh, threw the ball decently downfield, actually, but there were no big-time throws, and we saw that big-time last year, and he was horrible last year as well. I don't care that his offensive lineman was w w was awful. There's no way around it wasn't. He didn't get the ball out quick. Um, the system he was in was pretty awful, too. There's no way around that either. But I'd be surprised if Daniel Jones makes it up this uh, first half of the season. I really have no, literally, absolutely no confidence in him. Drew Locke is a backup. I mean, th there's worse options, but obviously, um, he needs receivers. And unless he and Malik Neighbors get, like, a really good chemistry going, I really don't see how this guy could be great. Uh, I mean, like, fit super well for this team. Again, you look at it last year, and he played had uh, arguably his best year of his career outside of his rookie season. Again, 2020, um, again, he had that one year as a starter, and he kind of sucked. Uh, 2021, he was um, not much better, and then obviously he didn't play in 2022 as a backup to Geno Smith. But last year, in the couple games he started, he looked pretty decent. Of course, he had um, a turnover filled 27-14 to 14 loss to the Niners. But overall, I mean, I'm not too mad about No, it was 2017, was it? Uh, 49ers, 2023. Uh, it was tw six, 20 to 16, my bad. Scores mixed up. Either way, Tommy DeVito, obviously, the, um, the Mafia guy, the Italian maestro, whatever you want to call him. Eight touchdowns to interception, so, like, the numbers don't look too bad, but obviously he's not a starting, starting caliber quarterback. In nine games, he took 37 sacks, which, which is concerning. And they had Nathan Rourke, who, um, he played for the Jags. Um, yeah, he, he's a backup here. Uh, either way, though, for the Giants quarterback position, I'm not going to give an F or even a D minus. I'll give them a D. I don't love what they're doing at quarterback here. Um, It's one of the worst. One of the worst. And you could argue it is the worst spot for quarterback in the league. I'm not going to say the worst, but one of the worst. D is what I'm going to give them. I, it's just, Daniel Jones isn't good. Drew Locke isn't much better, e even then. And I've just got Tommy DeVito, who um, maybe he'll do something. But yeah, 10 points for quarterback position. It, it's just so bad. Now let's look at running back. And now looking at the New York Giants running back position, it doesn't really get much better. Yes, obviously they lost their best player really ever since they drafted him, of course, with the second overall pick back in 2018. That would be Saquon Barkley, who is now a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. They're, of course, division rival. And again, looking at this running back room, I'll get, I'll get, yeah. Devin Singletary, I mean, he's not the worst option as a starter. Last year, I honestly think he had his best year in terms of, again, in terms of usage. Again, he had his most carries by far of his career. Maybe not by far, but by a good bit. He also broke a good amount of tackles. Had decent vision, 900 yards, 4 touchdowns. Yes, but he wasn't very explosive really at all. And he was very conservative, and I didn't really see much out of him. Also, the lowest yards per carry of his career for a guy who's supposed to be very efficient. 2020, again, it wasn't a good offensive line. Let me put it like that, though. Um... 2022, he was okay with the Bills. Not great. I think his best year was 2021, in my opinion. Again, he struggled in 2020 after a pretty promising rookie season where he averaged over five yards per carry. He was okay 2022. Best receiving season, yeah, probably 2022, um, so I guess you kind of get that bet out. Again, it had um, what it's called a career seven touchdowns that year as well. No way. Yeah. Either way, though, um, back to the point. Devin Singletary is probably like a bottom 10 starting running back. He's not awful, but he's not great either. I mean, he's okay, I guess. Uh, he's just... I don't get hyped when I see him. Uh, Eric Gray, I mean... Ugh. He was just bad last year's regard. Again, at Oklahoma, he was actually pretty cool. Uh, I, li I like watching him play a lot, but at the same time, I never thought he was very, like, really that talented. Just like a good utility dude. But he hasn't been good in the league so far. Tyron Tracy Jr., the running back out of Purdue, he breaks tackles, which is what they're going to need. So maybe he'll do something with that. But yeah, outside of that, not true. Great. Joshua Corbin is a special teamer. Looking at this running back room, I'm going to give them a C minus. No, I'll give them a D plus because. I mean, Devin Singletary is a bottom 10 running back. I really don't see him as a number one, to be completely honest. He's not the worst guy in the league, but again, Eric Gray, 
Town Tracy Jr., not the worst guys in the world of a backup, but they're not good at all. It's back to like 2017 with this Giants offense. Not Nine points there. Now let's look at the wide receiving core, which I guess it gets a little better. All right, now look at wide receiver for the New York Giants. Obviously with the, what was it, fifth overall pick? I think. Yeah, no, sixth overall pick. They took Malik Neighbors out of LSU. This guy arguably was the most talented player on this draft. Maybe not, I think he's the second best receiver, again, him and Marvin Harrison Jr., but for sure has a ton of talent. This, guy, talent. this guy, of course, is a big play machine. Also, very, again, just so, so talented. He's the best Giants offensive skill position player. Um, really, the past three guys they've taken, again, Odell, I think he'll be better than Odell and Saquon, to be completely honest. I think that's how, good, that's how good he could be. He's so, so good. Third player, I had ranked in the draft. He's that good. Darius Slayton, though, um, I mean, he was, he's been there number one ever since he was drafted to be completely, like, again, t in terms of consistency. Yeah, 2020, um, one, he didn't play, he wasn't that great, kind of sucked. Um, again, uh, 2020, 19, obviously, career out in touchdowns. Again, you expected a little bit of reaction, but he actually, honestly, was a better receiver. Got actually more separation that year. 2021, though, again, I already said he sucked. 2022, though, again, he actually had a really good year. I think bounce back year for sure. Again, he was their number one receiver, even though he only had the two touchdowns. And last year, he was the best year of his career. So, again, that's really good. I don't think he's a bad complimentary piece. He's definitely, again, a, again if you had him as a third receiver, you'd be super happy because, again, he can make big plays. And he also, again, he's just a guy who can, he does something. Uh, Wano Robinson, not a bad slot option, but he really never has been healthy in his career. I mean, last year, he's actually kind of gross, to be completely honest, but... Um, he actually played 15 games, so that's good. But uh, never really going to be a guy who you're going to expect to be super explosive, but is a very good yak threat, very reliable in the slot. Again, never going to be a guy getting big yak, um, what is it called, um, big play guy or touchdowns. Not, that's not his thing. That's what Jalen Hyatt's thing was, but he still can't run any sort of other route than obviously a uh, freaking go ball and maybe a slant. So again, he's got to work on that for sure. Uh, Allen Robinson, he's such a bum now, but I guess he's a good veteran presence to show some of these guys some of the relief packages that he's learned throughout his career. But as an actual contributor to this team, it's going to be minimal. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie, I mean, he kind of... He played for Buffalo 2020 when he was pretty good. Bounce after, um, what is it called? No, by 2020, five touchdowns. God damn. Uh, and yeah, even with the Bills, like, um, two years ago, he was pretty good. But after he left Buffalo, he kind of phased out. I mean, last year didn't do really anything. Again, it kind of sucked that he got injured. But, um, yeah, I don't expect him much either. Isaiah Hodgkins, again, he's had his moments. But, yeah, he's there. Uh, Gunnar Oswesky, again, he had that crazy touchdown return. But that's that's really all he's, he's good for. And he's not even their number one return now. Oh, uh, yeah, Isaiah McKenzie's more of their guy there. Um, Miles Boykin's done stuff in the league. That's probably about it. Honestly, not the worst receiving core I've seen in the league. But I'll probably give him, like, a C. Uh, yeah, probably a C. I actually don't think it's that bad, to be honest. I mean, yeah, you really only got four receivers that I really think can do much, really, at all. But, I mean, Allen Robinson, Isaiah McKenzie, they can at least get out on the field and do something. Same thing with Isaiah Hodgkins. I mean, I'm not, like, too mad about their receiving core, but... Malik Davis is the very worst will be a number two this year, guys. Like, he's that good. Uh, but, obviously, Gary Slayton, he's not the greatest number two, but at least he's a, a, a good number three. And, actually, Juan Robinson is a, is a good slot option. So, really, I don't, I don't have many complaints for this receiving core. It's just, again, Malik Davis is a freaking rookie, and... They, it would be, it would, they could stand have another good receiver, but really it's not that bad of, bad of a group. So that what is that nine, uh, fifteen points to that receiving core. Now let's look at the tight end position, which of course we'll get to in a minute. So tight end for the Giants is actually interesting. Obviously, Darren, if you don't know Darren Waller, he's basically going to retire, so you can take him out of the picture. But look at this tight end room. I, I mean, it's not great. Daniel Bellinger's not good. He's an okay blocker, but that's about it. He's he's basically a brick as a receiver. I mean, he was their starting tight end tw uh, for 12 games in 2022 before he got injured, and he, he only amassed 268 yards and two touchdowns. So let me get it straight. He is not a starting caliber tight end. A backup tight end, there's worse guys to have. Uh, uh, tight end again, Theo Johnson. He, he just wasn't good. I, I don't, I'm like he, he underperformed. Like in college, you're supposed to be good. I'm sorry, but um, super athletic guy. I, I love again. Great story if you didn't know about Theo Johnson. I want him to succeed, but as a football player, from what I've seen, so so raw. And I, I don't know if he has the intangibles as a receiving tight end to actually be good. But hey, no, maybe we're we'll okay. But yeah, again, I, I'm just I don't have much confidence in him. But I want him to do so well. Jack Stoll, I mean, he's respected. I mean, he hasn't really done much in his career, but I mean, as again, a guy who can make a couple catches downfield here and there, and again, maybe a couple plays underneath, and again, solid blocking tenant, not the worst. So they got three tight ends that, I mean, all good backups, I think. Theo Johnson, obviously, by for the most potential as a rookie, but yeah, they're going to have to do a lot of work with him to be their starter, who, again, I think they he, he could be really good, but again, he's just so raw, and again, he's an athlete playing tight end, basically. He's so raw. All right, it is really damn good. But right now, I gotta give probably D plus. I mean, you can't have three back tight ends and expect to be good. I mean, again, Theo Johnson, you know, I'll give him a C minus. I'll be a little nice. Nah, I gotta be a D plus. Again, Daniel Bellinger's just not a starting tight end. Again, Theo Johnson, again, it's just gonna take a while. Honestly, it's probably I wouldn't expect him to be like again a starting caliber tight end to be completely honest. Again, realistically, for the next two years. So with that all said, it's not promising. Six points for the tight end room. Now let's look at this offensive line. Which again was pretty horrible last year, but here are my thoughts now. All right, guys, Giants offensive line. Actually, a very interesting group. If you didn't know, they just picked up Jermaine Illuminor. Again, I want, 
what, what even was the contract? Alum, Alumnor. What was the contract? News. Uh, the, the, uh, again, I don't know if it's come out yet. Whatever. Uh, back, back to the point. Okay. Offensive line for the Giants. First off, uh, Andrew Thomas is a bona fide top seven, maybe top five tackle in the NFL. He, he's really freaking good. Th th that's just the truth there. Matt Nelson, mm, he was okay for the Lions as a backup. I have my issues with him. Isn't he like, oh, that's Dan Skipper. Um, he, he's actually not too bad. He just struggles against finesse quick rushers. That means he will give up fast sack, which is not good. But as a guy who can stay, um, what is called, set the edge really well as a shotgun blocker, really good. Jermaine Alumno, I already talked about. I think he's a good player. Again, played with the Patriots and the Raiders. He, he's been decent for them. I, I don't have too many complaints about him. The reason he's bounced around is because he doesn't exactly fit a scheme super well. He's kind of a unique player, but he's done okay in his career. Aaron Cini, I think he's a fringe backup player. I wouldn't be mad if you started him, but at the same time, he's not like a top, like top half. Uh, starter there. Jimmy Morrissey, he's bad. Austin Schlotman, I mean, he can snap. That That's really about uh, about it, though. Uh, Marcus McKeithen was horrible last year as well. Jalen Mayfield is obviously a bust off the Falcons. But, uh, of course, starting center, John Michael Smith Jr., he disappointed big time last year as a second-round pick. Star was a pass blocker, which was his thing. And uh, as a run blocker, he was useless. But um, overall, again, I, I saw some flashes, so I'm not, like, again, completely out on him. But, yeah, he didn't have a good rookie year. Uh, more underwhelming than anything, though. John Runyon, um, and again, played for Packers, decent for them. I mean, I don't really have any complaints about him. They gave him a good contract, though, that's for sure. Evan Neal, he's been, um, downright, uh, awful. Again, he, he asked a reporter if, um, uh, if he's the one flipping bur burgers, which is crazy. But, yeah, Evan Neal, he, it's this year, or, um, he, he's gonna be on, he's gonna be flipping burgers. Uh, Yanni Cat, Ka I don't know who this dude is. Nicole Nass, I have no idea who this guy is. So, overall, I mean, you got an elite left tackle, which is good. John Runyon uh, and Jermaine Alumno are decent guards. Their, their depth, I've seen worse. I mean, you, you need another tackle. I mean, Joshua Zudu, he was bad last year, but he's happy, which is good. He, he's a good dude. Uh, John Michael Smith Jr., can't imagine to be any uh, any less mediocre le uh, next year. So, really, I'm going to be honest, because probably this offensive line is straight up C. I mean, right tackle is about a black, is about a black hole here. But outside of that, guys, you can't really complain too much. It's not a bad offensive line, but same time, we gotta have him to see because I don't got anything to see because Bevan Neal's that bad. Oh, I, I want to give him a C plus so bad, but I I, I I really cannot do that. Um, nine. No, well, that's a, a six. Ten points. Good job. Now to the overall offensive grade, which if you don't know already, will be pretty bad. All right, guys, the total point comes out to a whopping fifty, which I expect to be pretty awful. Which. Means their offense is... Oh, it, it's that bad. I'm not going to put them in F, but I'll put them in a D tier. Oh, yeah, their offense is going to be awful, guys, this year. I really don't expect them to be good. The only things that I can say that, that will be okay is that maybe Devin Singletary can give them 50 yards per game and Luke Neighbors can be okay. But, yeah, I can't give them F tier. They're not going to be that bad, right? You know, I'll give, I'll give them D minus. Th this offense is terrible. Uh, It's really bad. Uh. Really, the only thing they got going for is they've got a superstar young receiver that, again, again, a prospect at least, and an elite tackle. That's literally it. It's so bad. I would understand you giving them an F, but again, they got at least they have something. It's not like the Cardinals last year where you literally absolutely nothing. So it's not the desert, but it's pretty. It's pretty close. D minus. Let's get in the defense starting with these linebackers. All right, guys, looking at this Giants um, defense course, they do run a 3-4 um, defense, which means we will talk about their linebackers, which actually, I, I like this group. Uh, Bobby O'Kara, okay, obviously a solidified number one, um, what is called linebacker. He is very good at tackling people. Uh, I'm not going to get any deeper than that. Uh, he had a four forced fumbles the last year, as well as two interceptions. He imp he's improved every single year, in my opinion, when it comes to um, coverage as well, getting two and a half sacks. This guy's a do-it-all linebacker in a lot of different ways. He's very underrated. The only issue I think I have about him is that he can't play man coverage for his life, but they don't put him in a situation to do that. They basically just say, you make the tackles in the holes, you you, you clean stuff up. So, for again, a garbage picker, who's actually a really good one at that, I wouldn't say he's bad at all. Mike McFadden, the reason I'm starting over here is because he's a really consistent tackler. But outside of that, guys, he had a very good season, in my opinion. Again, similar guy. He's not going to be great in coverage. But I will say this. He is reliable in zone in, in, in a couple different ways. Again, um, I would have scored four fumble recoveries. Very opportunistic. This guy just busts his butt. And again, he's a solid tackler. He's a good football player. Uh, not great, but he's good. Uh, not, obviously not super talented. Isaiah Simmons, obviously the 10th overall pick from the 2020 draft. He has, I wouldn't say he's been a bust so far in his career, but definitely a disappointment. The reason I don't say he was a bust because He's been decent in his career. Maybe not great, but he's been decent. Um, last year, though, again, in 17 games with the Giants, obviously didn't start 50 total tackles. He was man coverage. He obviously gave up a pretty high rating as his own guy. But then again, he, he still had a pick six. So, I mean, I guess that's good. Oh, wait. Let me check. I know it wasn't a good rating. Let, let's see where it is. There we go. Okay. Um, rating allowed. Uh, yeah, a little 
best of his career, actually. I, I get this guy confused with uh, a lot of the other ratings. Whatever, though. Oh, uh, yeah, he gets best year of his career in terms of that, but yeah, it, it was kind of skewed, too. Uh, Darius uh, Musafo, or, 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 yeah, Darius Musafo. This guy's actually kind of a stud. The, the reason he, I didn't have him higher is because he's kind of slow. But, yeah, he could be good. I'm, I'm happy he's on this team. Maddie Adams, Darian Beavers are both, are both backups. But overall, um, yeah, it's actually not that bad of a linebacker. I'll give him C plot. Uh, no, B minus, actually. I, I like what they got going here. I guess, again, th arguably three cal um, yeah, probably three starting caliber linebackers. Darius Musafo, he's decent. Yeah, B minus. The reason I'm giving him a B is because I don't think Mike McFadden is really anything better than that. Like maybe you could a little bit above average, but without Bobby O'Carrick, guy, guys, he's not a number one linebacker. That's why I can't give them again higher grade than the B minus. But I do like their linebacking core. I think it actually is a decent group. If Mike McFadden or Isaiah Simmons are really good next year, or even Darius Pasabo really steps up, they could absolutely be a really good linebacking core. But I got to be honest here because that's really where they are right now. Which means they are at what is that nine eighteen? Uh, what is it called? Twenty one points. P pretty solid linebacking core. Now let's look at the defensive line and pass rush. Okay, guys, now looking at the pass rush and line, um, what is called line, um, defensive line. Let's talk about the defensive line first. And the first thing I got to mention as well, this is by far the strongest part of this football team, and it really isn't even close. Um, TJ Davidson, he proved himself as a starter last year, in my opinion. Uh, well, I guess kind of, uh, but yeah. Um, in 15 games, he started like three of them. I think he's good. Uh, just, again, not very consistent as, again, when it comes to penetrating and really become, again, being able to, what is it called, out leverage guys. But he does have a decent pass rush arsenal, even if you don't really think about it that way, that way. But yeah. And then Jordan Phillips is a backup, again, for the Bills. He's solid. Again, he's getting a little older, so he's not getting the same speed or the same strength, really, or explosiveness. But he's still a solid backup for sure. Jordan Riley's been on this team a while as well. Ryder Anderson isn't very good. That's simple truth about that. Uh, Rakeem Nunez Roaches, again, he's been a starter for a while. He's been okay, really, his whole career. I mean, I don't really have any complaints about him. Uh, and I have the best defense, no, ta um, defensive tackle in the NFL. Yes, I do think he's better than Chris Jones. Don't tell me otherwise. Um, outside of Derrick Brown, he's the best run-stopping defensive tackle in the league, and he pen and he creates more havoc and just more pressure. Really, and anyone other than maybe Aaron Donald, I guess you could say Chris Jones in some ways, some ways as well. Oh yeah, a little bit step back in the sack column, but in terms of again, um, effectiveness against the run and just really just again pressure-wise, Dexter Lawrence is a freaking beast, guys. He's so freaking good. Uh. But either way, the depth of this defense line isn't great. I mean, Jordan Phillips isn't the worst backup, but again, it's a basically two average guys, and you got an elite guy, which bounced out to a pound around above average there. Um, but pass rush wise, they're very deep. Um, first off, Brian Burns, he is a true number one pass rush. He's been that his whole career. I think he's really good. Yes, he's inconsistent as a run stopper, but when you can get um, what is called um over um what is called seven and a half sacks every single year of your career, you're pretty good as well as getting a lot of pressures on a defense that really doesn't have anyone else. Uh, yeah, Derek Brown doesn't exist, though. Kayvon Thibodeau, yes, you, you're you going to complain that, yeah, mm, you get all skewed stats. He had, like, four and a half sacks against the Jets or the Commander, stuff like that. I get he had a very um skew, skewed stat line for sure, and, again, a couple of his sacks were just, again, quarterback falling down. I get that. Uh, but he's still inconsistent, but he still had a decent year either way. So, yeah, Kayvon Thibodeau maybe might have overperformed with his stat, but if he, if he can continue to improve, he will be a good player. Again, he's not great, but he's a good player. Aziz um, Ojolari, again, he really hasn't come back from that, again, big rookie year. We had eight sacks. But last year, um, last year he's still pretty serviceable. He still can't stay healthy, though. It would be nice to see him get back to that rookie season. Uh, Boogie Basham, he's just a power rusher. He'll be out there doing stuff. Um, he's been a disappointment, really, uh, every year of his career. But, I mean, at the very least, he'll set the edge. Uh, Taman Fox and uh, uh, Benton Whitley have never heard of these dudes. So, looking at it overall, again, they got two, um, again, a, okay, a really good number one. A solid number two, and that's probably what I'll give him. Aziz Olar, again, always potential. Boogie Basham, again, very worse as a fourth guy. And I just get Dexter Lawrence as well. For this defensive line, I will give them a B plus. No, I'll give them a, yeah, I'll give them a B plus. You've got two of the best players at their positions and answers for depth. I mean, I get Rakeem Nunez, George, DJ Davidson. They will get some pressure. They might not be great, but they will get some pressure. And yeah, the depth, on, yeah, I get the depth on, um, in terms of the pass rush isn't great. But the defensive line, you know, oh, yeah, okay, I'll, give it, uh, I'll give it a B. B, uh, oh, he's so good. I'll give him a B plus. That, that's fair. Um, which comes out to what is that? Six, eight, um, twelve, eighteen points. But for the pastors, I'll give it a B. I don't. Can't, I can't give it a B plus. Yes, I get how much Dexter Lawrence does, but uh, this is so hard. But they have no really. Uh, I'll give it a B plus too. Yeah, I, I'll do it. Um, they got a really good pass rush too. Again, Kevin Thibodeau, but is he really that good? Kevin Thibodeau's good, but he's not that good. He's like average. Oh, this is so hard. I'll give them a B plus. No, their, their offense is bad enough already. Oh, <laughs> uh, what is that? Uh, 12, uh, 36 points. Uh, that's all I got for the um, pass rush and offense, but uh, he, he was good last year. Now let's do the secondary starting out cornerback. All right, guys, looking at the, um, what is it called, um, cornerback room. De Deontay Banks, I think, is a stud. Yes, people are going to say he wasn't great as a rookie, but I think he was really good. I mean, 
He was really the only guy in that second year who could really cover it, man, and he showed it for sure. Stepped up, played against really good players. Again, some Giants fans don't think think as much of him because he, yeah, he does get penalties here and there. But Deontay Banks is a legit number one corner, guys. There, there's there's no flaws with him. Yeah, he might not be the most flashy guy, but again, he's really good. Cordell Flat, um, actually super talented. I haven't realized this, but he's actually a lot more athletic than you give him credit for. Play can play a little bit of safety too. And man, it's really you can't have him get too confused and put him in a lot of different sets because when that happens, he just isn't the same player. But again, when you can put him in a spot where again he can be consistently again in the same spot, he would be very good for you. I think, again, he could be a good player for sure, and we just haven't seen too much corner. Drew Phillips, again, I, I'm going to call out of Kentucky. Um, so, so raw. I don't love him just because of the fact that, again, he's so raw, yes, but I don't see, like, again, just the IQ or the instinct, really, to be completely honest. Yes, very athletic, but just I, I don't see it there, but may maybe he can be okay. Aaron, uh, Aaron Ronson has been healthy one year. Trey Hawkins struggled as a rookie, and that's really about it. I think they've got, honestly, two corners that I think are going to be good. But then again, like Drew Phillips, he should be decent. But Stanley Thomas Oliver, just you can't put him on the field. It's just it's not deep at all. I gotta give him like a C, probably C. Yeah, that's probably gonna have to give him it because Deontay Banks is good. But outside of that, Quirrell Flats also pretty good. But outside of that, guys, like Drew Phillips, I think will be decent. But again, they really don't have anyone who I think can like can be consistent there. Yeah, like Aaron Rodgers is not never healthy. So when we grand scheme of things, guys, you just can't. I don't think it would be that big of a deal because they do have two guys in that can play on the boundary. They really don't have any answers out to them. Like the depth in this cornerback position is razor thin. So I got, I got, I have to give him a C here. Like that's really the don't, like the purpose there because all Cordero flat. We just really don't know if he can be a true corner right? as well. I like him, but Deontay makes is really your only true corner right now. Now let's get safety. You're not expected to be good if you lose one of the best safeties in the league and obviously one of the best running backs. So. Tyler Newbitt, again, the pick they got here is really solid pick, in my opinion. I like him a lot. Again, I think he fits his system with the glove. He is not a true free safety, so the fact they got him in the second round, again, in a perfect scheme is really big here. I expect him to have a really good rookie year. I expect him to have, again, force at least five turnovers, which is a lot for a rookie. But, again, I love Tyler Newbitt, guys. He's a really good prospect. I like where they got him here. Uh, Jason Pinnock. He actually was pretty solid last year. He made a lot of plays for them. Yes, he did have his ups and downs in terms of man coverage, and especially, again, what is called judging some of the, again, the, again leverage, stuff like that. But overall, honestly, he was pretty good. He's a fast dude as well. You can't take that away from him. 85 total tackles, two sacks, two forced fumbles, um, two interceptions. Obviously, that 102-yard um, longest play of the year pick six, too. So he, he can make big plays. I don't, I'm don't. i actually not too concerned about having a free safety, but having Elijah Riley in the back isn't at the end of the world either. Yeah, he hasn't been great, again, when you look at him playing with the Steelers, but He's a disciplined player. He'll be okay back there. Jalen Mills, obviously, he's had it. He's had. The, he's been around it. Um, he was bad last year. There's no way around it with the Patriots. But he is a veteran. He's 30 years old. He'll do something. I mean, he's never been awful. Like really bad. Dane Belton. Um, this guy just busts bust his butt. I, 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 I don't think he's a starting caliber player by any means. But for a guy who's a fourth round pick out of Iowa, and again, I, I love them there. He's fit this again. He's done what, what he's needed to on this team. When he started, he's been good. When he's been on the bench, he's been good. He, he's just a perfect fit for this team. Overall, I'm gonna give this um um what is called safety room actually a C plus. I actually like it a lot. Again, the depth isn't great. Again, I'm very optimistic on the safety room. Don't get that um, twisted there. But it, it would be a B plus if they had um Xavier McKinney. That would be just a simple truth there. But Jason Pinnock, I do like, and obviously they just got guys who, who want to play ball, and they're all they're all consistent. So yeah, I'll give a C plus, which means they come out to about a nine eighteen points, which kind I think is fair for that secondary. Now let's go to the overall defensive grade. All right, let's do some adding here. What is that? No, what is that? Twenty one plus uh eighteen plus thirty six plus. 10 plus 18, 103 points for this defense, which doubles their offense, which puts them in the C plus tier. I'm going to actually give them a B minus just because I think this defense will actually be decent. Um, Yeah, the, the depth in that cornerback room is concerning, but at the same time, they'll probably have three safeties in the field most of the time because Jalen Mills is basically a hybrid corner there. So I really can't complain there. Defensive line is really solid, obviously, with the best defensive tackle in the league. Um, pass rush, again, it's confusing a little bit, but, again, it's not very deep, this defense, really, at all, but the, the guys they have in their, their specific spots are really freaking good, so, I will give them a B- minus for this defense, even if it's, again, super thin. Now, let's get into the special teams, that team depth, and the overall identity of this football team. And now, looking at the special teams, you know, Graham Gano, yeah, he wasn't aw awesome last year, I mean, this, the, the, I mean, the, the, the field goal percentage tells you that he was pretty awful last year, but, yeah, he also didn't miss an extra point, I mean, oof. He only played eight games, though. He got injured, so I, I'm going to kind of call it as a wash here. Before that, though, he was by far one of the best kickers in the league, and he still has one of the best legs in the league. I'm not going to get too concerned over last year. I mean, it wasn't good. They also, I guess, got a UDFA kicker out of Rutgers. Rutgers doesn't score points, though, so Ireland, what the hell? Um, but, yeah, 
<laughs> Maybe it'll be good. Jamie Gillum, the Scottish Hammer. We got some uh, UK guys on this football team. Yeah, this guy's freaking awesome. Um, he punts a lot, and he's really good at punting. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie, he's a decent return. He's crafty. Um, kind of mid, though, to be completely honest. Again, he's just not very fast. Not slow, though. Casey Kreider, I mean, I don't know much about long snapping. Overall, the special teams unit, honestly, was pretty decent last year. I'll actually give them a B here. I mean, they're going to need something, so I guess I'll give them that. Um, three, uh, six, eight points for the special teams unit. Now we're going to the overall team depth. Quarterback depth, honestly, isn't the worst. We'll probably give it a C plus. No, I'll give it a B. Yeah, B. Running back depth, um, C. It's not the worst in the league, but it isn't very good. Uh, C minus. Wide receiver depth, uh, probably C plus. I, there, there's worse, for sure. Um, tight end depth, um, again, got, got a bunch of backups, so probably a C. Um, offensive line depth, mm, it's mid, probably a C too. Yeah, I'm going to go out probably offensively a C plus maybe for the depth. I don't think it's awful. Linebacker depth, uh, actually probably a mm, B. I actually, no, no, yeah, B. I like it. Uh, defensive line depth, uh, D. There's no depth. I mean, you get Jordan Phillips, that's about, that's about it. Pass rush depth, it's actually pretty thin. I'll probably give it a C minus. It's not great, but yeah. Uh, cornerback depth is an F. They really have nobody outside of, again, really Deontay Banks and Nate Cooper. Obviously, you say quarter of fought, too. Um, safety depth, probably B minus. Really, overall, I'm probably going to have to give this um, special team um, depth. This is a D, um, 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 D plus for the defense. I'm actually going to give them a C minus. Um, I don't like their depth at all. Again, it's just corner. It's so thin. And again, I think, again, if, like, Dexter Lawrence gets hurt or, like, Kayvon Thibodeau or even by Brian Burns, their defense is freaking screwed. They're in a tough spot here. So, for that reason, again, what is that, 12, uh, 16 points for their depth. And the identity of this football team, again, if Daniel Jones sucks, they're going to be bad anyway. So, maybe it's just they're going to be bad. So, again, Brian Dable, though, I, I really don't know how the heck they're going to make the playoffs. This team's just not very good. I'll give their identity, though, because I think they know what their expectations are, are is a B-. minus. Last year, again, they kind of fell apart. This year, I don't think it'll be like that. I think they'll either be awful, and they'll be, know they'll be awful. It'll at least they'll be, like, there. But honestly, I think they're, they, they know what they're going to be, and I think that actually could, could be good for them. Thank God. Uh, 35, though, and good luck. Here, here's their overall grade. And the overall point total does come out to 212, and I'm assuming you get 10 points from your quarterback position and 50 in total from your offense, and obviously you have an overall grade that is... um. On offense that is lower than some of the be best quarterback grades. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna show So I'm gonna overall 212 points puts this team in C minus tier. I'll give this roster a D plus I honestly defensively it, it's decent. It's not great, but it's decent the D the, the, uh, no, I'll give them a C minus. That actually does make sense. So the ro this Giants roster isn't completely horrible, but their offense is a complete mess It's just not good the quarterback position is just so bad. It's the worst on the roster, and when that happens, you're gonna get a bad grade. Again, there's no the depth is concerning too. Again, I think that will hurt them as well. I have them both C minus guys. I don't think it's the worst grade you'll see by any means, but it's pretty bad. The Giants are a bad roster, and yeah, we'll see what they can do with it. Um, so after the Giants though, and yeah, see ya for you'll see I guess on Wednesday. But yeah, I think you'll get the idea when you watch the pre video and maybe the the end of this. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Which is gonna air it out deep downfield. Touchdown, <laughs> Travis Fulgham down the sideline for 42 yards. Play of the game. Fantastic play for a guy who's come out of nowhere. My only question, did he step out of bounds on about the two-yard line? Let's just take a quick look.